Good morning and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Ben and today we are going to be reviewing the £240 Nike Alpha Fly and I'm going to be comparing it to the £40 Nike Revolution. Um, so today's video is purely a performance test against these two shoes. We've got the most expensive shoe here from Nike versus the cheapest shoe from Nike. So I'm gonna be looking at the efficiency factor which basically works out um, how fast you run relative to your heart rate. Um, so the distance covered per heartbeat basically. Um, and we're gonna be working out which shoe makes you more efficient. Uh, my hypothesis if you like for the nerds out there is that this shoe is gonna make me about five to 10% uh, more efficient over the 5k distance in terms of um, my heart rate should be lower at running at faster speeds whereas this um, cheap Nike Revolution no thrills will result in a higher heart rate and a slower speed. So before we go into the video if you don't know the difference between these shoes this is Nike's super shoe it's got a carbon fiber plate a full Nike Zoom uh, midsole which is their most reactive midsole and it weighs very little whereas this is the Nike uh, Revolution the cheapest shoe the foam I'm not sure if, an, if they would call it anything uh, but it's very very hard not responsive at all it's just just standard running shoe basically no thrills um, but £40 you can't really go wrong with. On to the actual running in the shoes. We're going to do 5k threshold in both the shoes. Now threshold for me is about an 8.5 to 9 out of 10 effort. I'm going to do the um, Nike Revolution first and then I'm going to take a 20 minute break, let my body fully recover. Hopefully my heart rate will drop back down um, and then I'm going to do 5k threshold in the Alpha Fly. Um, we're going to conclude the video by looking at the two different times. I'm not going to look at my watch during the actual runs um, just to try and make it a fair test. I want to make sure that I'm running an eff to effort rather than to time. And then finally we're going to calculate the running efficiency factor which basically calculates speed produced per heartbeat um, which should meet, should result in this shoe coming out with a higher um, running efficiency factor than this shoe. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the 5K, starting with the Nike Revolution. So I've got the Nike Revolutions on my feet. Um, first time putting them on. Slightly uncomfortable um, compared to the usual shoes I'm, um, I run in, but then they are only 40 quid, so you can't really expect a lot. Um, so the plan is two and a half kilometer warm up, um, and then I'm gonna pause the watch, restart it, and do a 5k at threshold pace in these shoes. So yeah, let's get going. Two and a half kilometer easy. Okay, so I've just finished the warm up. I've uh, done a few strides in these lovely Nike Revolution 40 pound shoes. It's time to do a 5k at threshold and then get back to the house, swap the shoes over um, into the Alpha Fly and see how I perform in those shoes as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, leave a like, consider subscribing and hopefully we'll see you around with some more running videos soon. Right, 5k threshold, let's get it going. Three, two, one, and we're off. Right, 5k threshold. So I'm on to lap two, probably around two kilometers to go. I'm not looking at my watch until it beeps 5k, just to keep it a fair test. Oh, it's hard work in these shoes. Keep going. Hundred meters to go. Ooh. Ah, 5k. There we go, 5k threshold in the Nike Revolution. Oh, that was hard work in those shoes. Also did a long run yesterday, 25k, so body's feeling a bit tired. Let's have a look at the official time. Watch says 18.04. Not bad in these shoes. 20 minutes to recover, then do exactly the same in the Alpha Flies. 
So there we go, just finished 5k in these Nike Revolution shoes. Overall they weren't actually as uncomfortable as I thought they might be. In fact they were quite comfortable at the high speed, um, but they just felt a little bit dead in terms of they weren't really giving me any um, energy return. Um, and towards the end of that 5k they were feeling like pretty hard work. Um, I guess they feel like a racing flat. I've never actually raced in a traditional like flat racing shoe. Um, I'm, I'm used to the super shoes, the Nike Alpha Fly, the Nike Vapor Fly. Um, so it was actually quite nice to run in a 5k in these shoes. Um, they weren't really helping me along much, but yeah, that's 5k in these. I've just had a coffee. Um, I've got the Alpha Flies on my feet and I'm ready to go and give it a go again. I've got, I think my final time was 18.04 in these shoes. Um, I haven't looked at any of the data. I'll look at the data and analyze it. Um, in terms of heart rate, cadence, time, average pace, that sort of thing and work out, like I said earlier, um, that um, efficiency to finalise the video but we'll do that when I get back after I've done a 5k in the Nike Alpha Fly. 5k in the rain, in the Alpha Flies, let's see how they get on compared to the Nike Revolutions, the £40 shoes, let's see how we get on. Right, three, two, one. Go! 5k threshold. Oh yeah, the bounce. Typical. The minute I start running, it starts tipping it down with rain. On to the second lap. The rain's held off. Someone's out a second to go. Woo. Two and a half k to go. Last hundred meters. Woo. 5k in the Alpha Flies. Woo. 17.09. So, interestingly, almost a minute quicker than in the Nike Revolution. Right, let me just recover. I'll see you back inside to go over the stats. Nerds, get ready for plenty of data. Right, so there we go. 5K in the Revolutions first, followed by 5K in the Nike Alpha Fly. So let's talk some stats. It's time to nerd out a little bit. So the Alpha Flies made me 55 seconds quicker than the Revolutions. Um, I say made me, I tried to put in the same amount of effort, so around that tempo to threshold, about 8 out of 10, um, and when I was doing the running I, I felt like I was, I was putting the same amount of effort in, um, and that was um, reflected in the heart rate data, it came as a 164 average beats per minute in the Alpha Fly versus a 163 in the Revolution, so I basically put in the same amount of effort, and these came out 55 seconds quicker. Um, which as a percentage decrease is around 5% which I'm taking as means this shoe made me 5% faster over the 5k than the Revolution did which is interesting. I think when Nike first released their first ever super shoe the 4% the, the whole marketing campaign was it made you 4% faster. Um, so this is the Alpha Fly, the third carbon plated shoe that they brought out and I've found that it's made me 5% faster than this revolution, which I thought is really interesting, I don't know about you. In terms of the cadence, um, when I ran in this shoe, my cadence was 177 steps per minute, whereas in the revolution, I was only running at 172 steps per minute, which is a fairly quick for me. I think on an easy run, my average is around 168 um, steps per minute. But yeah, interesting again to see that uh, my steps per minute was increased in the Alpha Fly, so potentially this shoe makes you um, have a higher cadence. So in the Revolution, the uh, stride length was 157, whereas in the Alpha Fly it was 164, which is a 7 centimeter difference between the shoe, which again is interesting. So for every step I took in this shoe, I was 7 centimeters further along the road than in this shoe. So this shows how bouncy and responsive it is 
it was propelling me along that seven centimeters further every step which is pretty fascinating to me to, to see that sort of data so moving on to the efficiency factor of these shoes um, basically to calculate running efficiency a, a very common way of doing that is vo2 max but you basically have to um, look at how much oxygen you're taking in during an exercise um, but obviously I couldn't do that on the road, you have to be in a lab, it's very expensive. Um, so I'm looking at um, the efficiency factor, which is a way of calculating your running efficiency without um, testing the oxygen uptake. So it basically, it basically looks at your speed and your heart rate throughout the activity, and it gives you an overall score um, with a higher score being more efficient. So. In, if you want to also if you want to see how I calculated the run the efficiency factor I'll leave a link in the description it will talk you through it basically how far you run compared to your heart rate so in the revolution my efficiency factor score was 1.7 and in the alpha fly my efficiency factor was 1.78 um, so again that's a 4.7 percent increase um, in the alpha fly so yeah bear with me a lot of stats but I'll go on to a bit of a conclusion um, so those sort of stats make a little bit more sense according to my stats these two made me 55 seconds quicker which is a percentage increase of 5% so 5% faster my stride length increased by 7 centimeters uh, my cadence also went up by 5 steps per minute and according to my efficiency factor the alpha flies were 4.7% more efficient or made my running economy 4.7% more efficient than the revolution. So there we go, that pretty much sums up the video. Um, I've always wanted to know how much faster super shoes make you compared to say your average daily trainer. Um, this shoe cost £40 where this shoe cost me £260. But yeah, this made me 5% quicker. So is 5% quicker um, worth £240 more? Pounds? Um, to a professional athlete definitely because that's a huge gain you're going to get on your competitors if you're not wearing this shoe say if you're wearing this shoe the, your competitors are going to have an edge over you even for your average fun runner or club runner like me um, I would say I would definitely be looking to invest that extra money in this shoe that's probably how Nike can get away with charging so much because it makes you that much more efficient but yeah that's pretty much it for the video hope you enjoyed that one a 40 pound shoe versus a 260 pound shoe um, the results are fascinating to me. I hope you found them fascinating too. If you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It really helps boost the algorithm. Um, check out some of my other running videos as well. Um, yeah, and if you are new to the channel, thanks for watching and I hope to see you around with another one soon. Goodbye.